All right, so uh, let's dive into some uh, pretty fascinating stuff happening in AI right now. Okay. We're going to be talking about large language models or LLMs. Right. And this uh, Chinese startup called DeepSeek that's making waves. They're taking on like the giants, Google and OpenAI. Yeah. And saying they've gotten comparable results in LLM development, but for way cheaper. Mm. So how they do it and what does it mean for the future of AI? That's what we're going to unpack today. It's a really fascinating case study. They're challenging the assumption that you need billions of dollars and tons of computing power to be a player in the AI field. Right. It's really interesting. And before we go any further, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. When we talk about LLM, we're talking about the tech behind things like ChatGPT, right? Yes. Computer programs that can like understand and generate human-like text. Uh -huh. It's already changing how we interact with technology. For sure, and they're trained on massive amounts of data. Yeah, that's where that large comes in. Mix. You can think about it like teaching a kid to speak. Okay. The more words they hear, the better they understand language. Yeah. But as you can imagine, training an LLM this way it costs a lot. So let's break down that training process a little. Okay. We've got pre-training and supervised fine-tuning. Right. What are we talking about there? So pre-training is like feeding the LLM a giant buffet of data. Okay. We're talking tons of text, data code, you name it. Wow. This helps the model to learn the patterns and relationships within language. Gotcha. Supervised fine-tuning is more like bringing in a tutor to refine those skills. Okay. Because humans are providing feedback to make the responses more accurate and sound more natural. So is that where DeepSea took a different route with their R10 model? Yes, exactly. They just said, see you later, to yeah. supervise fine-tuning. They went all in on reinforcement learning, mm -hmm. which is a much more independent approach. Interesting. It's like you set a task for the AI and then reward it when it gets closer to the answer. This lets the model learn through trial and error and figure things out on its own. Pretty remarkable. Ugh. But I heard there was a little snag with R10. Yeah. Something about a language barrier. This is where it gets really interesting. Okay. R10 started mixing Chinese and English in its responses. Oh, wow. Almost as if it had different compartments in its brain for each language. That's kind of funny. Yeah. It's a good reminder that even cutting edge AI can have its quirks. Absolutely. So how did they address that language issue? So they got creative and combined a small amount of very high quality data hmm. with just a touch of supervised learning. Okay. And that's how DeepSeek R1 was born. Right. Not only did it fix the language barrier, but it boosted the model's overall performance. So they managed to get past that language barrier with a pretty simple solution. Yeah. It makes you wonder if there are other low-hanging food opportunities in AI development that we haven't thought about yet. It really does. Well, let's talk about the cost. You mentioned earlier that LLM development typically costs billions. Right. How much did DeepSeek spend? They developed their R1 model for just $5.6 million. Wow. That's a... Uh... Yeah. Well, that's less than some people spend on a house. I know. It's crazy, right? It seems almost impossible, especially when you consider that they had less powerful computer chips because of U.S. restrictions on selling them high-end GPUs. Yeah. So how did they manage to get these incredible results with limited resources? That's a great question. Yeah. And that's what we'll get into next. DeepSeek's approach wasn't just about saving money. It was about efficiency. Oh. They were really strategic with their data. Interesting. Instead of using a ton of data like other developers, they focused on quality over quantity. So it's not just how much data you have. It's about the quality. Exactly. That's a big takeaway. Yeah. And they were also really clever in how they used reinforcement learning. Okay. They designed a system where the model was always learning and improving based on how it performed on certain tasks. So like a super efficient learning loop for the AI. Yeah. It makes you wonder if the traditional way of developing LLMs is actually kind of bloated and inefficient. Yeah, it raises some questions about the industry standard, for sure. For sure. And the stock market seems to think so, too. Really? When DeepSeek's R1 model came out, companies like NVIDIA mm -hmm. and Alphabet. Google's parent company? Right. Yeah. Their stock prices went down. Interesting. The big players are definitely noticing. So DeepSeek is a serious threat. It seems that way. And this all came from a pretty small team, right? Yeah, DeepSeek only has like 139 employees. Wow. And most of them are young researchers in their early 30s. That's incredible. Especially compared to companies like OpenAI or Google that have thousands of employees. So it's not just about money or computing power. Right. It's about smart people with a fresh perspective. Definitely. A big part of their success. For sure. Yeah. And there's another thing about their approach. What's that? 
open source. Yes. They believe in making their AI models available to everyone. Which is a very different philosophy than some other big tech companies. Yeah. What are the implications of that open source approach? I mean, could this make advanced AI available to everyone? Yeah, exactly. It could happen. Imagine cutting edge AI tools, not just in the hands of big corporations, right. but available to researchers, developers, even students around the world. That could lead to so much innovation. For sure. It's exciting to think about. Yeah. But are there any risks to making this tech so widely available? That's a really important question. Yeah. Is there a downside we should be thinking about? Definitely. These are things we'll need to watch as DeepSeek continues to develop. It seems like DeepSeek has really shaken things up in the world of AI. Yeah. They've really challenged a lot of assumptions. It's not just about having a ton of money or the biggest computers. It's about innovation coming from unexpected places. Right. And showing that a small team with a smart approach can make a huge difference. And their commitment to efficiency. Yeah. And their use of data and open source. Mm -hmm. Those are all things other AI developers can learn from. Absolutely. It's a good reminder that things are constantly changing. Yeah. What we think is true today could be completely different tomorrow. So what do you think about DeepSeek's journey? Yeah. What are your takeaways as a listener? Do you think their approach is revolutionary? What about the risks and rewards of their open source philosophy? All good questions to think about. Yeah. And who knows, maybe someday we'll be doing a deep dive on your groundbreaking AI innovation. That would be awesome. Until then, keep those minds curious and we'll catch you in the next deep dive. See ya.